one monitor power without power. Sounds a bit like an electronic engineering trick question, right? Yes, power monitors are great. They measure power, current, and voltage, report those values to an I2C or SM bus, and keep your power management in check. But one power monitor, just one, can consume a whole lot of power. So how do we monitor our power without burning power? Let me introduce you to multi-channel power monitors. Oh yes. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Power monitors can be very effective in terms of power management for a variety of designs. And the use of a multi-channel power monitor can not only lower your overall system power, but also lower your code overhead and simplify prototyping and event detection. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Mitch Polonsky from Microchip and I investigate the benefits of multi-channel power monitors and how Microchip's PAC-19-4X and PAC-19-5X can help you monitor your power in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. Hi, Mitch. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Nice to meet you. Ah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you as well. Okay, so we're talking about the reduction of power system needs with multi-channel power monitors today. But Mitch, before we jump into the details, can you give us a brief reminder about what you mean by power monitors? Sure. So when we talk about power monitors, they're known by several different acronyms and names. So we're talking about what's also known as high side current sensors or current sensors or current monitors, depending on what website you might be visiting. And basically, these are devices that sit across a sense resistor. They measure current, voltage, and power. They can be connected to higher voltage rails, and then they can report digital values across the I2C or SM bus. Okay, so Mitch, what kind of applications are we looking at here? So the applications for power monitors are really diverse. And so on the screen, what you can see is that it covers everything from portable electronics on down. I've given a little green circle here to denote which applications really align great with our topic matter, which is green energy. But to just delineate, right, we've got portable electronics, maybe we're talking about drones or VR headsets, we're talking about smart city, so IoT falls into that, your security or your video doorbell. Industrials are really good, green energy target application. When we think about robotics for warehouses, right, they have to go back to the charging station, so you really care about power there. And then outside of some of those green energy target applications, we have telecommunications, networking, and uh, computing, whether it's data center or your laptop. Excellent. Now, Mitch, what kind of power and current monitors does Microchip offer? Microchip offers a nice portfolio of power monitors. Here in this table, what you can see are two new families that we just released, the Pac-19. 5X and the PAC-19 4X. And both of these families can measure one, two, three, or four voltage rails, that is, for power consumption. And what you see here is that one of the families, the 5X, will measure zero to 32 volts. The other will measure zero to nine volts. So that'll be great for our green applications. And then we've made a couple of improvements as we've evolved over the years. Namely, our accuracy has gotten better, so we can measure a 50 microvolt target measurement with better than 1% accuracy. We've got multiple alert outputs, so that helps when we want to catch those events and do some event detections, those power events. And then we've improved our sampling rate. So for the sampling rate, what's nice is for prototyping, right? I've got a troublesome rail and I want a lot of samples 
to uh, catch some of those anomalies maybe in prototyping. Finally, you know, we've come in or these families come in small packages, WLCSP, but for those that can't withstand WLCSP, we also have a three by three footprint, which is smaller than our previous generation. Okay, great. Now, Mitch, are there any downsides to using these kind of power monitors? Downside to using power monitors fall into one major camp, and that is you need to burn power to measure power. And I've uh, highlighted that here on this slide. When we talk about burning power, a single power monitor can consume a lot, right? So what we have in the industry is anywhere from 360 microamps for monitoring a single power rail or even more. However, what is really nice about this PAC-19 4X and 5X portfolio is that when we do multiple rail power measurement, we actually can save the system power when compared to just using a bunch of single channel power monitors. In fact, you can save as much as 31% power or more when we just take a look at the dual channel example. So Mitch, can we take a closer look at the PAC 19 4X and 19 5X? Yeah, sure. So what's interesting here, and it basically details how we're going to save power in green energy applications, is the fact that these families are sharing a functional block to measure that current and power. So what you see initially here is channel one is measuring the vSense voltage. And what you get with that is the same that you get with the other channels, right? So if I go to my next slide, you can see I'm sharing that same vSense measurement with all of the channels I want to measure, right? So whether it's channel one, two, three, or four, I'm using the same circuitry. And that's kind of it's not really the secret sauce. I think other applications can do it, but it makes a real big difference when we're doing it for power monitoring. That makes sense. Now, Mitch, event detection is a really important aspect of power monitors. So how does the PAC-19-4 and PAC-19-5 deal with this in particular? Great. Yeah. So event detection is really important for our customers. And we thought about that by providing two individual event detection outputs. So these can be used to divine, warn, capture, and report your power events. So what's nice about having two is that you can divide and conquer as a designer, as a system designer. Maybe I want to dedicate one alert for different subsystem events. So I can do that with this type of portfolio, the PAC-19 4X and the PAC-19 5X. Or alternatively, maybe I want to dedicate one alert output for detecting spurious current events and another one for voltage events. So I can separate those types of events I'm trying to capture as well. Finally, what's nice about some of this event detection is as a designer, I can choose to measure or mask any type of the event detection I'm looking for to capture, right? So over voltage, over current, over power, or even under current or under voltage. Now, Mitch, I can imagine how this kind of solution could save me quite a bit of time. Yeah, that's another thing that we put some thought into, right? Saving time to market and prototyping. So in the terms of uh, lowering code overhead, we have time saved, right? And the way we look at some of that lowering of code overhead can be viewed as I don't have to measure a low power event and a high power event differently. You can think of this as am I measuring trickle charging or am I measuring a full power load event? I can do that with this device because I have a wide dynamic range of measurement. Not only that, we've got power calculations on chip, right? So that's some code lift off of the system designer. So that's nice in that respect. We'll give you that power measurement digitally. And then we also thought about 
compatibility in footprint. So for the PAC 19 4X and 5X, you can have the same footprint whether you're measuring one, two, three, or four channels of power measurement, and you can have the same footprint. And then there's the burst mode that will help you simplify some of the characterization, right? So that means I can measure one voltage rail in particular and catch events at a uh, faster sample rate so that I can improve my design. Fantastic. Now, Mitch, could this type of power monitor be a good fit for low voltage applications as well? Sure. So in terms of low voltage, we look at the PAC-19 4X family as opening up the door for low voltage applications. There's not a lot of high sense current sensors or power monitors that are really targeted to measure nine volts. And so with the PAC-19 4X, you can measure nine volts directly without additional circuitry. So that kind of falls into the camp of your security cameras and your drones. And not only that, you get 16 bits of resolution when measuring that dual lithium ion battery voltage. So that's what's nice about the PAC-19 4X. What's also nice about the PAC-19 4X is that it can be configured to measure single cell products, right? So single cell lithium ion battery. So you can configure this to measure zero to 4.5 volts, which is a common single cell voltage max application, and you still get the same 16 bits of precision measurement. Fantastic. Now, Mitch, if my audience is ready to get started with one of these power monitors, where should they go first? Well, Microchip offers two different boards, depending on whether you're doing the PAC-19 4X or the PAC-95 X. These boards are shown on screen here. What the board numbers are, the EV40S84A, it's kind of a mouthful. And then the other one, a little bit more simple number, a DT100119. And these boards will help you graph the multiple outputs. It'll help you measure all the elements that you want to do your detection in your prototyping. So what you can see here is I can measure my vSense voltage, my VBus voltage, my power, my accumulated power, and even my energy. Fantastic. So if my audience wants even more information about the PAC-19 4X or the PAC-19 5X, what kind of resources do you guys have for them? We have a whole host of resources to help the customer get started, right? Not only that board, but obviously we have our webpage links for all the different variants of one to four voltage rail measurements, but we also have drivers. So that's really nice, right? We can have a driver, depending on what your application is using for 16 or 8-bit picks, AVRs, Python library. We have device drivers that'll help you integrate into a Windows application. We even have a couple of videos online. You'll also see on this picture, other than the board, we have what's called a micro E clickboard, which is a smaller footprint if you don't want the entire big board format uh, you can do that with a micro click board, which is also something that uh, Mouser offers. Excellent. Now, this has been quite a bit to take in today. Mitch, can you recap your main points for me? Sure. My main points are at a high level, power monitors really serve a diverse marketplace for power measurement. Another main point is the fact if I'm going to use a power monitor in my system, I'm going to benefit by using a multi-channel power monitor in my system. That is, if I need more than one channel. And with the PAC-19 4X and 5X in particular, it's been designed to simplify characterization and prototyping. It's designed to facilitate really superior event detection with two event outputs that can be highly configurable. It's great for my MCUs, MPUs, FPGAs. And then uh, we have a lot of host software that's going to help you get started, whether you're using MCC or Harmony or Windows or Linux or Python. 
Excellent. Well, Mitch, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're very welcome, Amelia. Thanks for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.